Okay, folks, a few months ago, we released a video about Grok vs. ChatGPT. At the time, there was very little information available about Grok, which is why we've decided to put together an updated and refreshed version of this AI showdown, Grok vs. ChatGPT. Of course, we'll include details from both Grok 1.0, the version currently available, and the upcoming Grok 1.5. So make sure you watch the entire video to better understand which AI might be best for you. And let me know in the comments which one you've chosen. So Grok is an AI chatbot from XAI, a company founded by Elon Musk. ChatGPT, on the other hand, comes from OpenAI, an organization initially co-founded by Musk and Sam Altman, but now operating independently, with Altman still a key figure at OpenAI. Now, both Grok and ChatGPT are AI chatbots. These are sophisticated software programs designed to simulate conversation with human users. They are capable of understanding and processing human language to respond in a way that mimics a natural interaction. In short, you can literally chat with these AIs and ask them to perform various tasks. Both AIs reason and respond based on their knowledge and thus on the data they have been trained with. Grok has the feature to update in real time its knowledge base through integration with the X social media platform. You know, Elon Musk made Grok with a witty and uh, somewhat arrogant personality. So far, Grok is the only AI to have this character by default. Moreover, Grok can handle complex queries and provide satirical commentary on various topics, making its interactions informative and also entertaining. In comparison to ChatGPT, I guess Grok is less politically correct, and after recent events, it has an open source version, which is not the case with ChatGPT. To access Grok 1.0, you can utilize the open source release available through XAI. I will put the link in the description. But for early access to all Grok releases, including the upcoming Grok 1.5, you'll need the X Premium Plus plan. ChatGPT, on the other hand, is trained on a diverse and huge dataset from various sources, including books, websites, and other texts, up to a certain cutoff date. However, with GPT-4 included in the premium paid subscription called ChatGPT Plus, it can perform real-time online searches. As I just mentioned, ChatGPT offers both a premium subscription and a free version that uses the GPT-3.5 model. GPT-4, on the other hand, is a larger, more sophisticated model that understands and generates more nuanced text and handles complex queries more effectively. Now, GPT-3.5 primarily handles text inputs and responses, meaning you can interact with it only through text-based communication. Meanwhile, GPT-4 can process and generate responses based on uploaded documents and other types of files. Moreover, GPT-4 can also generate images thanks to the integration with DAL E3, adding a multimodal dimension to its capabilities, since it can understand and process elements within images. You know, this allows GPT-4 to be used not just for text-based interactions, but also for tasks involving various media. In contrast, Grok 1.0, the version currently available, lacks multimodal capabilities and cannot process images or documents, but the upcoming Grok 1.5 will introduce these abilities. However, unlike GPT-4, Grok does not yet have the capability to generate images. Okay, now let's talk about the context window, which is the maximum number of words each AI can process per task. Regarding Grok 1.0, it can handle a context window of up to 8,192 tokens, which roughly translates to about 4,000 to 5,000 English words, depending on the average word length and tokenization specifics. Next, we have Grok 1.5's expanded limit of 128,000 tokens, which equates to handling about 64,000 to 80,000 words. And finally, GPT-4 with a window of up to 32,000 tokens and 128,000 in its turbo version available for developers on OpenAI's playground would be dealing with approximately 16,000 to 40,000 words in its various configurations. Now, folks, before we look at another unique feature of ChatGPT, if the video has been useful to you so far, hit the subscribe button with notifications on and give us a like. It will help us so much to bring you more similar content and you won't miss the next videos. Now, back to the story at hand. You should know that with the ChatGPT Plus plan, you can create your own custom GPTs and sell them in the GPT store. 
This platform is similar to an app store where users can publish and monetize their custom GPTs. These can be as simple or as complex as needed, tailored for specific purposes or tasks without requiring any coding skills. In simple terms, you will create your GPT chatbot through another GPT called the GPT Builder, literally writing out what you want your chatbot to look like in its final form, including details about the actions you want it to perform for other users, the tone it will have to use, the ability to create the logo within the GPT Builder itself, and more. Now, regarding the quality of the two chatbots' responses and their ability to reason, I think some benchmarks are very interesting. Rock 1.0 has shown promising results in various standard machine learning benchmarks. You know, it scored 63.2% on the human eval coding task and performed impressively on the MMLU and math benchmarks as well. These results indicate that Grok 1.0 outperforms large language models like GPT-3.5, but still falls short of the more advanced models like GPT-4. Grok 1.5, on the other hand, scored impressively on the human eval coding benchmark, MMLU, Massive Multitask Language Understanding, and Math Benchmarks, showing significant abilities in solving complex mathematical problems, indicating enhancements in its problem-solving algorithms and better understanding of mathematical contexts. ChatGPT, particularly in its GPT-4 iteration, generally scores higher on similar benchmarks. Its performance in areas such as reasoning, comprehension, and complex problem-solving is noted to be superior. However, despite these advancements, there have been periodic complaints and observations regarding the drift in performance quality over time. You know, users have noted that GPT-4, while generally more capable, has shown inconsistent behavior, especially in its responses to sensitive or complex questions. I guess this drift might manifest as changes in the model's willingness to engage with certain types of queries or in how it processes and responds to them. Some of this behavior has been attributed to updates or changes in the model's training and operational parameters that aim to address or prevent problematic outputs. Okay, folks, let's do a brief summary of the key features of these two AI beasts. So we said that Grok is noted for its integration with real-time data, which can be a significant advantage in scenarios where up-to-date information is crucial. I think this makes it particularly appealing to users who need up-to-the-minute information, such as media professionals, social media managers, and those involved in dynamic fields like stock trading or news reporting. However, its current use is somewhat limited to those with access to the X social media platform, and it's available primarily in the US. ChatGPT is more easily accessible since the version 3.5 is free, but with that you can only work with context prompts. GPT 3.5 is trained on a diverse dataset from various sources, including books, websites, and other texts, up to a certain cutoff date. GPT-4, on the other hand, requires a ChatGPT Plus subscription, but it is much more efficient than its free version. It allows you to search online, attach documents and files of various types, and generate images through integration with the Dolly 3 AI Image Generator. Then, Grok is designed to be less censored and more direct, potentially offering a fresher perspective compared to ChatGPT. I guess this can make Grok suitable for users looking for less moderated content. ChatGPT, on the other hand, tends to provide responses that are more polished and considered safer, making it a reliable choice for educational and professional settings. Moreover, in healthcare, Grok could assist providers by monitoring real-time health trends and alerts, while ChatGPT might be used to answering patient queries or assist in mental health support through conversational therapy. Or take finance, where Grok could offer real-time financial insights and fraud detection while ChatGPT could help with customer service and provide financial advisory service. With that being said, I think both AI models have their strengths and areas of specialization, making them suitable for different user needs and scenarios. Grok's appeal probably lies in its real-time data integration and potentially more engaging interaction style, while ChatGPT offers robust, reliable interactions across a broader range of topics and multimodal capabilities. Let me know in the comments if you have already chosen ChatGPT or Grok, or which one you are most likely to use after watching this video. As always, if you found the video useful, subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on, and leave a like. It will help us so much. See you in the next one, folks. 
You all take care.